Hello everyone, welcome to Life Prepared. I had a request to show you how I dehydrate eggs. So I'm gonna do some of my farm fresh chicken eggs. These are probably about a week old. I took them out of the coop on the 28th as a matter of fact. So um, what I'm gonna do first is these have not been washed. So I'm gonna wash them all really well. And I'm going to put them in two separate bowls because half of them are going to be done raw and the other half will be done as already cooked scrambled eggs. So after I wash them and get them in the bowls, I will show you what I do from there. All right, I'm going to thoroughly scramble the eggs that are, well, both sets, but these are going to be the raw eggs. And I want to make sure I did not add anything to them. There's no butter, milk, anything like that. It's just the eggs. So if I don't want huge pieces of white, which really won't matter, because I, if needed, I pulverize them after. So that is going to be the raw eggs. And I have um, a dozen eggs here, but most of them are my bantam eggs, which are less than a full-size egg. The thing is, is I, I want to have a nice, rather thin layer of eggs all over. I'd rather do them faster than have them take too long to dehydrate down. So you'll see. It usually fits pretty much. Um, and I like it as close to the element as possible. That way they will dehydrate faster. And this area tends to get done faster, so I come by every you know, I'm in the kitchen right now, so I'll be coming by frequently, and I spin the tray every time I walk past to give this a little bit more even drying time. So the next layer is going to be, I like to put a rack in between just so I don't have to worry about them touching anything. If I can get the racks apart here. I'll put my other rack on top just adds a little, but I spin it so it's fairly close. And then I will put my scrambled eggs above that, give them a little air space. With the cooked eggs, I do like to do them in my microwave. I don't know why. They just seem to come up really fluffy that way. And I can chop them up pretty easy. And I kind of get them down into small pieces as much as possible because I do want these to, you know, dry out fairly quick too. On the, um, I do set a timer. This is not something I, you know, kind of put in there and forget about like you can on some of the other food like fruit. I come in every half hour minimum in the beginning, sometimes you know, sooner as it goes on. And I stir the eggs, especially the raw ones, so that they kind of dry out as evenly as possible. So that looks pretty good. I did wash my hands, so I always wash my hands real thorough before I touch anything I'm working with as far as food. Just want to make sure there's no really big pieces. Okay, so this is going on a parchment circle because as they dry down, they will shrink and I don't want them falling through. And when I'm dehydrating them down, I do, I do use two separate utensils as far as stirring because of the ones that are not cooked. The raw eggs I like to use a lot for baking. Ouch, oh, this is hot, so be careful, guys. I like to use the um, raw eggs for baking. I can make up like a, say, a pre-made pancake mix or something like that. I have not kept these longer than, probably the maximum was a year. Usually in the winter time, the chickens don't lay as much. So, but I have some young girls and they're just starting to lay, which is good for me. Hatched out a bunch this summer. 
Okay, so spread those out the best you can. I'm going to add one more layer above them because I don't waste the eggshells. Those go on top because those are going back to my girls. On goes the lid. And I'll show you as we get a half hour from now how far they've gone. Well, it's been 30 minutes, so let's see where we're at here. Take this off. As you can see they're starting to get a little dry on the edges, kind of like if you left them sitting out too long. But I'm going to stir them up a little bit here. Kind of expose new surfaces here. Just made sure nothing's stuck to the paper. And to not to spread out some of the thicker areas here. Okay, and then let's look at their liquid. It's going to be down. Let me move this. And you'll see it, the. I don't want to spill anything, so. You'll see a skin starting to form on here. That's why I frequently come in here and start moving this stuff around because I don't want a layer on top to form and then it won't dry out the rest of it underneath. And then I'm going to give it get back on there, give it a little spin. Sorry, my machine can be a little noisy, so I don't think it's horrible for what it is. This side's a little scary here. It's a little tipped this direction, I guess. So turn that so I don't have any spillage. I can move that over later. All right, so back on go all the layers. And I'll keep doing this every half hour or so. This is one hour into the drying process. I'm going to come in here and break up some of these larger pieces. And to be honest, the best way is with clean hands because you can really start to feel if there's a lot of moisture, which there is. But I just wanted you to see. You can really start to see it getting dry around the edges on some of these. So. All right. Do this rather quick here. And more importantly, let's see how that bottom layer is doing. Oh. There we go. This is why you have to come back. If not, it'll dry on top and it'll never get down underneath. Just push the skin off so that it can continue drying. It really does help speed up the process. I'm going to give it a little spin. There you go. Okay, I thought I'd bring you back. We're about an hour and 20 minutes into this right now. I got tied up on something else. I didn't come back right away. As you can see, it's starting to get there this is going to look pretty ugly i have to admit this part here and once i take it out i grind it up powder it up real fine but i'm just trying to get it to dry as fast as possible like i keep saying you can see some areas have started to dry already and of course now this is going to take a little longer because i made a big lump there but my most important goal is to get this to dry as quickly as possible. Now, I did a lot of research before I tried even to do eggs, and I'm going to tell you, do not take my word for this. I want you to do your own research. The original uh, magazine article I read was from Backwoods Home from, I believe it was the November, December issue of 2015. 
they do, uh, I believe it may have been cooked eggs. I don't remember. I'd have to look at it again. And they recommend keeping your temperature at 160, 145 degrees. Well, to me, that's the perfect temperature for bacteria to grow. So I would prefer to keep mine a little higher, closer to 160, 165. But if you're worried about things like salmonella, you could bake it in your oven at 175 to 185 degrees. Personally, I would go higher. Uh, for at least 15 minutes that would make sure that anything that may have been growing in these eggs is you know as far as bacteria and stuff is gone so I want you to do your own due diligence on this don't rely on what I have to say I'm not a doctor I'm not some kind of expert anything like that so now my eggshells the eggshells I had previously washed but I did not get too overboard with them because I'm not, if I was making my own um, calcium powder, I would have sterilized them in a sanitizing solution. But these are going back to the girls, so I'm just drying them out so they'll last a little bit longer. My girls don't like oyster shells, so this is the best way for me to get back some calcium in their diet. Some of these are a little sticky, so I'm going to keep going on these. I usually sprinkle out a little bit. If they gobble it up right away, I give them more. If they walk away from it, then I know they don't need it right then, and I save it. That's why I do it like this. Here's another quick update. It's been a little over two hours. As you can see, they're starting to really start to dry up around the edges on this one. Although, definitely, I don't know if you can quite see it. They're still way too wet to put away. See that? You can definitely feel the wetness in them still. Yes, the outsides are getting crunchy, but that's when I break them up a little bit more, and I'll do that off camera. And let's see how the bottom is looking. See, it's getting there, isn't it? Oop. You can see that's getting dried off. These bits are going to take a little longer. Sometimes they come through and I scrape this up. If it's super, super dry, I'll set that aside on another um, piece of uh, parchment paper because I don't want them to get overcooked. But this is going to take a while because it was a, a fairly deep layer. You know, a half dozen eggs is quite a bit. So don't get discouraged. It does take time. And eventually, all of this will be nice dehydrated eggs for you. Kind of looks weird at this point, but it'll get there. I just wanted to briefly show you. I'm going to scrape some of this egg up off of here because it dries better if it's not stuck down. So, yeah, the, the raw eggs are a lot more work. To do so I don't do them very often honestly I could take the, the scrambled eggs and powderize them is that a word powderize um, and turn those in for baking as well they'll work just as good so all right there you go see I, I scraped it up now and it'll help it dry a little bit better so I mean really that's the hardest part of the whole thing is just five minutes of scraping so there you go I have a lot of lumps in there that definitely have to dry some more and I have these pieces that still need to dry some more I set them off to the side for a little bit I want to get them up off this plastic pretty soon a lot of times I switch them over to parchment paper because it, it just blows through there a little better and I'm going to put those back on, and I'll show you again in another hour if they take that long. Okay, they're finally done. Um, I have to admit, I'm, I almost didn't finish this video because I'm upset with myself. I had taken two 
little boys in to get neutered that were abandoned on my farm and I had to go pick them up and I thought it'd be gone for an hour and it ended up there were some problems and it was gone for three hours so my eggs are now overcooked and I really don't care for them overcooked but see can you see how some of them got pretty dark I don't know if you can tell these are it's kind of like you know when you cook an omelet and you get those two brown bits on it I don't like my eggs like that but it is what it is in an emergency they'll be fine so I'm not going to put these in my normal um, uh, fried egg kits but I think I'm going to do an experiment with them and I'm going to grind these up into a powder and use them in baking so I'm going to try like a small batch of something and I will put these in there well needs to say this got awful overdone too so I'm, I'm really disappointed but you know I wanted to show you when I said don't walk away I should have followed my own advice I walked away from it and that's my fault so I'm going to put this into my little um, blender thing here and that's normally what I do and I blend this powder up Normally the other eggs, these, I, I leave whole and I use them that way. I mean, maybe they don't look as bad. I mean, obviously you can see the difference here, but um, it's still going to get used. I don't waste it. It'll be fine for baking. I will use it in a cake or, or something that I need eggs in, and that's fine. So I just wanted you to see, you know, I wasn't kidding when I said that if you walk away from it, they can get overdone. Let me grind these up and I'll show you what it looks like then. Okay, let me show you here. This is my previous egg powder here. That is how I normally get it. Kind of like a nice golden yellow and this is what I currently have. So I just wanted to, you know, when I say it's overcooked, that's what I mean. And you can kind of taste it if you were eating this straight as eggs. Like I said, it's like those um, dark brown spots on an omelet. And I'm not much of an egg fan to begin with, so, you know, I don't like them that way. You may think they're fine, but if I'm going to eat a straight egg, I don't like it overcooked. But anyway, here they are all ground up. They're going to go into my jar with my powdered eggs that I will save for when I'm out of eggs and I need some for baking. The other eggs will go in a container, and I will mark them for baking only but you know if I really really need them and I'm hungry I'll probably eat them so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up let me know what you think do you have any questions I haven't answered I'd be happy to do so otherwise I hope you have a wonderful day